Now we have Dr. Efren Domingo, Department Chair of the Philippine General Hospital, to answer our questions about cervical cancer. Hello, Dr. Efren Domingo. Let us all welcome him with a round of applause. Hello, Doc. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me. Of course, Dr. Domingo. So can, I, can you give us a brief background on cervical cancer? So what causes it and how is it detected? Um, Cervix, cervical cancer, yes, as you mentioned, is the leading gynecologic cancer in women in the Philippines and for that matter in third world countries. So it is caused in 99% of the tumors by a sexually transmitted virus. And the name of the virus is human papilloma virus. And there are so many subtypes, but the most common etiologic HPV, let's call it HPV for short, is type 16 and type 18. And unfortunately, women are infected or may be infected uh, from the time they initiate coitus, or what we call a sexual debut. And in the Philippines, based on the YAF study, Young Adult Fertility Studies in UP Diliman by Raimundo et al., uh, coitus, uh, usually 20%, begins at age 15. And so, being young, children or adolescents should be protected early from the infection uh, with human papilloma virus or HPV. And that is the focus nowadays. We call that uh, primary prevention. Primary prevention means giving the vaccine, HPV vaccine, preferably the quadrivalent, before the girl gets infected and that is called routine HPV vaccination because that one affords the greatest protection. Because if you give the bakuna or the vaccine after she has had sex or coitus, the label is already catch up vaccination. That is not so ideal. She may have acquired one or two subtypes already, but still we continue to promote because it is still efficacious. If one gets infected with an HPV type, pangkaraniwan, they will get infected only by usually once. It's important to remind everyone that, you know, early detection and early prevention is, is important in treating cervical cancer. But I want to ask you, Doc, uh, what, what are some of the changes that, or discomfort to be specific, that women encounter when they, they get HPV or cervical cancer? Uh, first of all, it is happening <clears throat> during the reproductive age group. No? The highest age incidence is usually between the age 40 to 49. But they may have acquired the virus or have developed changes leading to the frank cancer 10 to 15 years before. So if you subtract from 40 at the age of 25, or 30, a girl may be manifesting already a developing cancer that may manifest with abnormal vaginal discharge, eventually becoming hemorrhagic or bleeding. Uh, bleeding after coitus or sex, it's a sign. Or bleeding for that matter when she is not supposed to bleed. Pain is not usually a symptom or a problem in this cancer, except in the advanced stages of 3 and 4, where the cancer is already huge and has infiltrated the periosteum of the pelvis, and so there are so many nerves there. So that's already an advanced cervix cancer when pain is already manifested. Regarding that, what treatment uh, options are available for these women? Yes, well, when we speak about the treatment, you will have to know that majority of the cases in the country unfortunately come to us in the advanced stages of three and four. You will be interested to note that in my division in UPPGH, the youngest we have diagnosed is in a 13-year-old 
who came to us in Uremia, uh, stage 3B. She became a commercial sex worker at the age of six. So that still cannot escape my mind up to now. And when I lecture, I really have to highlight that. Because, as I mentioned, advanced stages, the usual treatment afforded for them is uh, chemo radiation. It's no longer surgical because surgery is only um, afforded for early stages of 1A up to 2A1 because we cannot operate on bigger tumors. There will be residuals, and you can uh, distribute uh, embolic um, tumors. And so the standard of care is radiation with cisplatin, cisplatin sensitization. And this is carried out in about eight weeks, and hopefully there should be a lysis of the tumor, and hopefully she gets cured. That's really sad, no, Doc, na the youngest is 13 years old. And it really reminds us that if we have the opportunity to, you know, do the steps necessary um, to make it preventable yes. and, like, higher chances of cure. Doc, I want to ask if there are any global or national strategies to eliminate cervical cancer. Yes, that's the exact word. Eliminate cervical cancer. It will entail three things. Like, you do the prevention by advocating vaccination in 75% of the girls in the country. For that matter, gender neutral, in inclusive of the boys. Because the licensure of the HPV nanovalent vaccine includes the men. Next, you will do the active search of the lesion that is in the beginning st stages by performance of the pap smear, the BIA, or the HPV DNA. You target about 90% as well of the susceptible women. And lastly, you target 95% of those who are already developing the early cancer and hope to have a complete control or cure of the tumor. In that setting, your challenge is really the correct challenge, eliminate, it's not just to control. Thank yeah, you. And keyword eliminate. So again, doc, that's vaccination, pap smear, and to detect. Cure. Detect and cure. Detect and cure. There we yes. go. Do you have any advice for the women in the room, especially um, regarding the best ways to prevent cervical cancer. Are there any good habits that we should be forming, especially those young women who are not aware of this yet? Uh, yes. Lifestyle, revision, wellness, as you started speaking about, entails the complete spectrum of uh, vaccination, um, avoidance of unhealthy habits like smoking, inclusive of advocating exercise. And, of course, education. If you begin early on those four qualities or values inculcation, the youth will be able to understand easily. But just be careful. There will always be those who will not enter that area of uh, wellness and lifestyle orientation. And so, for that reason, you do your detection. And still... Among many, remember, we are in a third world country. The healthcare delivery system is not okay. And people are generally financially handicapped. So given that, they will probably never seek any of these preventive and detection and curative stages. So be ready to help as well those who come to us with very big tumors already. So it's really a big challenge, but as you mentioned, the government should be included and legislation should be part of it, including budget allocation. But it is part of the ethics, and that is a big interesting topic to discuss, the ethics of limited allocated funds. No? So many uh, advocates of 
allocation of funding for these individuals will also be appropriately included? Talagang it ranges from individual action to the collective action of the entire Philippines, the nation, in order to fully keyword eliminate cervical cancer. Thank you so much again, Thank Doctor, you. for your knowledge and for sharing that with all of us here today.